What is going on, everybody? Welcome in to another edition of the Daily Energy Newsbeat Stand Up here on this gorgeous Wednesday, December 13th, 2023. As always, I'm your humble correspondent, Michael Tanner, coming to you from an undisclosed location here in Dallas, Texas, joined by the executive producer of the show, the purveyor of the show, and the director and publisher of the world's greatest website, energynewsbeat.com, Stuart Turley. My man, how are we doing today? It's a beautiful day here in Dallas. I'll tell you, I'm getting around. Yeah, nice West, to nice to have you Texas. in town for a bit. Yep, I was in West Texas yesterday. You you you're all over the state. Luckily, the menu is fire as always. <laughs> First up, House passes bill barring imports of Russian uranium for nuclear power. We'll follow it up with greens erupt as fossil fuel phase out is dropped from proposed climate deal. Um, the cover image <laughs> you got to love. Um, the cop president clapping over that. Um. Uh, but still we'll cover the, the fallout from that. Next up, the geopolitical problem of the United States, a German Russo Japanese connection. Uh, this is a follow up to George McMillan the third, um, which uh, Stu interviewed on the one and only Energy Newsbeat podcast. So we'll be doing a little bit of a deep dive in there. And then finally, I mean, you got to love this headline: Chevron CEO cautiously optimistic on Venezuelan Guyana border dispute downplays military conflict risk. Um, so Stu will, will, will determine if he believes that or not, but uh, he'll then kick it over to me. I'll quickly cover what's happening in the oil and gas finance markets. We saw oil tumble about 3% today. Not good. API crude oil inventories dropped, so it's good to see there. Um, and then we'll let you get out of here and start your week. Um, as always, um, guys, the news and analysis you are about to hear before we dive in is brought to you by the world's greatest website, www.energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all of your energy news. Stu and the team do a tremendous job of keeping it up to speed with everything you need to know um, to be the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy business. You can check us out um, again online. You can uh, subscribe to us, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts, at Energy Newsbeat on YouTube. Um, you can hit the description below in the podcast or the YouTube to check out all of the timestamps and links to the articles. You can email the show questions at energynewsbeat.com, and you can check out dashboard.energynewsbeat.com, our data news combo product that we're, we're really working hard to push in Q1 2024, so no better time to start on your Q1 goals for next year than now. With that, though, Stu, I'm out of breath. Where do you want to begin? All right, dude. Hey, let's go over to the House. Um House passes bill barring imports of Russian uranium for nuclear power. Michael, we talk about this. This thread today is pretty amazing. But this is first order, second order, and this is going to affect third order of magnitude Ooh. of a decision. Okay, we import as the U.S. 20% of our uranium from Russia. Mm-hmm. Wow, that Ooh. is a lot. You lose now in a critical mineral area, Michael. What happens to the price when you lose twenty percent of your market? It skyrockets. Yeah, rut row. So the House passed it. The measure passed by voice vote with bipartisan support. I don't get that. People don't understand that a good chunk of our power in the United States is done. Needless to say, we need uranium for our ships. Yeah. Now the, 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 the part where I agree with the two representatives, um, you know, Republican Kathy Morris Rogers and, and, and Democrat um, Frank Polano, you know, this is one of their quotes here, specifically from Kathy Rogers. Um, she's from Washington. One of the most urgent security threats to America right now is our dangerous reliance on the Russia supply of nuclear fuels for our nuclear fleet, adding that the war in Ukraine, quote, intensified the issue, um, you know. Right. In, in, in what, what good is it going to do to sanction Russian and it's not going to do anything. It's not a huge revenue source. Them. The question is, Stu, where else do you source nuclear material from? That's what I mean. You just have to suck it up, buttercup, and leave it alone because sanctions don't work. The You handle Russia through other means. 
the only one that's going to get hurt on this is the consumer. What's funny is this last quote, the combination of banning Russian Im- ranning imports of Russian uranium and investing in domestic capacity will provide private industry with both the certainty and an incentives it needs to invest in the nuclear fuel supply chain. That could not be wrong. Banning Russian imports will provide the correct incentives. Yeah, I doubt it. No, I doubt it, too, because also you have the legislation through uh, regulatory issues Mm -hmm. with Biden banning our uranium mine Mm -hmm. uh, that he did five months ago. So I'm over here going, okay, which came first, the regulatory chicken or the uranium crossing the pond through Russia? Uh, You can't have both eggs and eat them at the same time. I got to make that into a T-shirt. You can't have both eggs and eat them at the same time. All right, what's next? Let's go to the greens erupt as fossil fuel phase out is dropped from proposed climate deal. I'll tell you what. I had a podcast today with Paula Glover. She's the CEO over, over at the Energy Alliance, and they are an advocate for energy savings, Michael. You and I have been doing our podcast for three years That was the first time I ever talked about saving energy by not using it. And she is energy agnostic. How that plays into here is Mm -hmm. the, the president of cop is basically an oil man. And it has been a hoot watching all of the other folks, not happy with the fact that we've got oil folks hanging out there. We got nuclear folks, the 22 countries that signed on to nuclear it's leaving al gore in the dust now this one says the draft doesn't really meet the expectations of this cop in terms of the urgently needed transition to clean sources of energy and the phase out of fossil fuels the u.s climate envoy john I had a funny name, but I'm going to leave that alone. Kerry said during a, a fractious closed door meeting late Monday night, Tuesday, which Politico listened into via an unsanctioned feed. Somebody had their phone in the pocket. How cool was that? Sitting next to Lurch and somebody's got your pocket open. Remember when he uh, tooted the other day? How would you yeah, like to little, have that? A little on extra you? Heinz 57 on his sandwich um, at lunch. It's absolutely yeah. unbelievable. Um, so, and then I protesters mean, them, stood out saying, it, "This because... is bull crap." Yeah, you see that? Yeah, we'll uh, we'll we'll spare the podcast. Well, they have to. They realize they have to have it. Well, nothing better when you can get former U.S. Vez- president or Vice President Al Gore to unload on the proposal. Here's his quotes, Stu. COP28 is now on the verge of a complete failure. That's, I mean, that's music to my ears. There could be nothing better as an outcome oh. for COP28 than to hear Al Gore say that. It, if Al Gore says that, it means it's good. Yes. Yay! <laughs> he's like the anti, he's yay. the Kramer. It's the anti Kramer. Just go do the opposite. It's the so. anti Kramer. Oh, absolutely. Right. What's the next? Let's talk George McBilly. He's out. Uh, George McMillan. Let's go to George. I'll tell you what, this one has been going off around the world. The article is the geopolitical problem of the U.S., a German-Russo-Japanese connection. He's talking about some connections. In our podcast that George was on, uh, go listen to that for some folks. It's an hour, 50-minute uh, podcast. And I tell you what, George is a... Uh, academia energy geopolitical guru and uh what we're talking about here is energy uh you may have a country that you think is your ally if you can't support their low cost energy they are not your ally we may be losing japan to russia in order to get these pipelines done and the U S is not going to allow that to happen. Mm -hmm. Ah, this is a problem. The reason why Germany is more important than Japan is that Germany world consists of Switzerland, Switzerland, Liechtenstein, Austria, which shares a border with Germany on the Danube river. If the German oil and gas pipeline network is connected to Russia by any pipeline, then it could not only supply all the German world, but the Danube River and Slavic world as well. 
Do you see why the Nord Stream was blown up? Yeah, I mean, you this 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 series that you're rolling out and and and, and will be rolling out with George McMillan is, is is absolutely incredible. I think you highlight some interesting stuff. Well, it's clear that you know. Uh, well, I thought it was the Ukrainian seals. Yeah, oh yeah, uh, and on a uh, uh, a, a sail a sailboat. They went out on a yep. three-hour cruise to blow yep. up the pipeline and only got three out of the four. So yeah. no, and and that was such a deep, um, a deep water event. A sailboat ain't gonna get the men there and back. So what are they, kamikaze uh, pipeline bombers? I'm not buying it. So anyway, uh, the background is. Uh, let's go to the next one. I see your hand going up. Okay. Uh, but anyway, everybody read that, that, uh, letter, uh, you know, okay. You know, I, I just got the hook guys for our podcast listeners. Michael <laughs> has a, a, po a poker tail. He leans back and he goes, Whoa, the arm goes up. And so when the arm goes up, I know that I, this is like my mom in church. She leans back and hits me it's in the, the back of the head. My eyeballs the look. pop out. It's the look. So I got the look, folks. We're going over to Chevron CEO, cautiously optimistic on Venezuelan Guyanese border dispute oh, thank downplays goodness. military conflicts. Thank goodness. Now, here's the, the thing. I was uh, on the energy transition on Monday talking to uh, Armando, David Blackman, and uh, Tammy. That's a heck of a panel. Uh, and you get some uh, Scooby like me on there. It's pretty much an honor. But here's the problem. Chevron is the only oil major to have operations in Venezuela. The company recently agreed to buy Hess Corp for $53 billion, which would give it a 30% stake in the Guyana offshore oil development. Michael, as an investor, when you're playing with your phone, would you sit back and take a look at, on calculate out, is that deal actually going to go a good thing now that there's, this is going on or is it wasted money? Well, that's a $53 billion rut row. Yeah. It, here's the thing. I think clearly Chevron did some due diligence on this and if they didn't shame on them and they deserve to lose that investment because you should have, you know, it, it's not hard to hire a couple consultants to map out the geopolitical risk of, you know, purchasing this asset. What do they do? They have boots on the ground. Do they have stuff. It, I, 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 I'd be shocked if they didn't necessarily take this into account. I think this is not having talked with a few people um, closer to this situation. I actually have a, uh, a friend of mine um, who's very close, who's from oh, cool. Venezuela. And he said, this is nothing more. And, and then I'm quoting him. I'll leave him anonymous. But the word I got from him is this is nothing more than show from Venezuela. They'll never actually invade. This is more so that Maduro can come back to his people during a uh, an election and say, well, the reason why we don't have any electricity is because the Americans cut us out of Guyana, which sure, maybe there's some territorial dispute there, but that's not going to change how this how does, oil, in my opinion, outside of a military uh, conflict, nothing's going to change hands. And again, as Mike Worth, CEO of Chevron, said, that's unlikely. So I'm with him, um, but hopefully they did their due diligence on this. I think there's a little more to this story than your friend is thinking through. Right? And, and, and uh, uh, you have Venezuela, who used to have a gigantic uh, oil field equipment and, and everything else. Uh, they have destroyed it. Yep. And so instead of taking a million dollars, the way that um, uh, he ha um, uh, has kept control, the dictator there, he pays his generals extremely well. Million bucks here, million bucks there. The generals then turn around and pay the colonels. Colonels go around there and then the sergeants go out in the street, beat the snot out of the Venezuelans to keep everybody in line. That is how it's been done. The money has been coming from the Venezuelan uh, oil, um, and they have not been putting CapEx back in. They don't have the talent. They don't have the oh, yeah. uh, offshore uh, hands. They've got rid of everybody. And so this is a problem. They're just skimming any money that they can yep. do. And that... In Guyana, uh, Shell has gotten into Guyana, and they've got it. You've got 
the old Diamondback um, uh, out there. You've got Hess. Exxon's You've there. You've got Anadarko. Exxon's there. I mean, everybody is sitting over in Guyana drilling. This is a big deal. I, well, I, don't, of, I think it's, it's, it's one of the last few unexplored or, or hot new offshore targets. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think it's going to be a bigger problem. And it's because Putin has been to uh, his team. He's been talking to Maduro and uh, there is a bigger uh, statement in here. There is something big going on there and it's between Putin and China. Interesting. As always, you keep that. You got anything else for us? No. I just want to do my Biden imitation. I want to lean into the mic and go, no. On that scary note, guys, we'll kick it over <laughs> and cover finance. Um, you saw it. We saw the S&P 500 up about a half a percentage point. NASDAQ up about eight tenths of a percentage point. Yield, uh, Ten-year yields uh, only up about um, a tenth of a percentage point, 4.2 on that yield. Dollar index drops about a quarter of a percentage point. Crude oil drops about 3.2 percentage points. Currently sitting as we record this about 5.30 um, here on the 12th, 68.71 absolutely kind of a cratering really off you know a, a combination of demand feels like it's softening on the demand side and people are beginning to forecast oversupply um specifically on the oil side we also saw natural gas tumble to a, a month's long low at two dollars and 22 cents so this oversupply that we are um in is, is not going to be good we also saw the consumer price index drop today um for november that that came in higher than expected, which kind of bolsters that view that the Fed is going to continue to raise interest rates into the next year and not cut as maybe what has been expected. Um, the EIA finally came out today, Stu, and lowered their 2024 Brent price forecast to give you an idea. Um, it, it, they lowered it by a whole $10. They said it's now going to average $83 in uh, 2024 versus last month where they said it was going to average $93. So the EIA taking a playbook out of out of us a little bit and slashing their price. Currently, as, as we talk, Brent was down. Um, Brent's currently trading $74.19. Only other interesting thing that happened is we saw the API drop their crude oil inventory estimates. They actually foresee a 2.2 million barrel draw from the Strategic Petroleum Reserves. That number will be confirmed as you listen to this today um, here on the 13th. But again, I, I you know we keep talking about this number. I don't know how much it's impacted, Stu. We're, the fundamentals right now are more specifically on what future supply and demand is going to look like versus what the current supply demand balances are right now. Um, you know, it's it's not good when you see soft demand and an oversupply that leads to catering prices. Um, yeah, but the old pricing norms are not there. And then there was another article that just came out uh, a few minutes ago that said. Uh, we don't know when um, uh, peak demand is going to hit. <laughs> well, so, we don't. Yeah. But we, we still have to. We do. We do. We do. You know, the oil markets deal with the realities that are happening on the ground. So, no, I agree with you. Um, oil is not going anywhere, but we have entered this interesting soft spot. Um, I think the real question, and this is something that we're going to record um, a deal spotlight on Crown Quest and, and Oxy. We're going to do that later this week try to get it out next week for you guys it's going to be more of kind of an overview i don't think I, we'll deep dive it a little bit but one of the questions i think we need to rock, grapple with Stu, is okay you have all of these drillable locations oil's 69 bucks that strip price don't look doesn't look that good that's you know we no. call if you were in yoga it would be called downward facing dog so the real question is what exactly you know do the budget plans um, change for any of these companies i i know budgets are really set but is it really right. You know, yeah, is it? I don't know. Yeah, strip price may be rolling down to the fifties. I mean, oh, yeah. it's strip prices in the fifty sixes when you're talking about um, yep. um, later on getting into you know uh, thirty four. Well, it's down to sixty two, I guess. So, point of the matter is, it's gonna be interesting to see how how, how some of these budgets yeah. hold up um, rolling into twenty twenty four. What am I missing, Stu? What else should people be scared of? Oh, uh, buckle up. You never know when the tornado man-made disaster or the grid may blow up, according to the uh, FERC. Buckle up and be care be ready to take care of your family. Buckle up, buckaroo. So, all right, guys. Well, with that, we're going to let you get out of here, uh, get back to work. Uh, thanks for checking us out here on this gorgeous Wednesday. For Stuart Turley, Michael Tanner, and the rest of the Energy Newsbeat team, we'll see you tomorrow, folks. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.